Welcome to a special bonus edition of the IUPUI Coaches Show here on the ISC Sports Network. No April Fools. We have a new basketball coach at IUPUI. What literally three months from today will be known as IU Indianapolis. It is Paul Casaro, who is frankly no stranger to me. I've been covering him for the last 20 years at this point, dating back to his days of playing football at Rodden Colley High School. But after four tremendously successful years at our shared alma mater, the University of Indianapolis, he will now be the man in charge of the IUPUI Jaguar program. Coach, congratulations. Thank you. And, and we'll kind of get into your background coming up here in a matter of moments. But just overall, I, I again, because I know you, you and I have talked several times in this process behind the scenes. Why was this job so attractive and so appealing to you? Uh, it's a no-brainer. Um, I think that this program, this university, this athletic department is just oozing with potential and just ready for a big breakthrough. You know, a Division One program in the city of Indianapolis, um, new leadership uh, with our with our chancellor and athletic director who have a lot of energy and want us to be successful. And I think the rebranding to IU Indianapolis opens a lot of doors as well. Uh, there's, there's no reason that we can't be a major po- player in, in college basketball. And I'm just thoroughly excited in, for this challenge and for the opportunity. So literally this became official as of all of seven days ago. So what have the last seven days been like in your life? <laughs> oh, it's been pretty crazy. You know, you, you, nice thing is I didn't have to move. You know, uh, typically when you take another job, especially in coaching, uh, you, you're thinking about, okay, moving, moving your family. I was able to start the next day. I just drove a different direction. You right. know, so that was, that, that was actually kind of nice. Uh, but, you know, it's been great. Uh, the, the administration here is, is awesome. That uh, they're, they're so helpful every single day. So that's been made my transition really smooth. Um, all the other coaches are, are, are really friendly, and everyone's just really eager to help. Um, it's easy to it's it's been easy to tell in my first seven days what I saw in the interview process that um, everyone here is on board and really works well together and that that IU Indianapolis Athletics is on the verge of something big for you personally what will that adjustment be like again you've been part of a, a great school at UND a very good and traditionally powerhouse league in basketball at the division two level in the GLVC but now stepping for the Horizon League that just had a team beat Kentucky in the first round of the NCAA tournament and, and a conference that, that clearly is, is on the uptick. What's that adjustment going to be like for you as a basketball coach? You know, there, there is going to be some adjustments, but I look at always parallels. You know, um, it's all about how you build it. And I built a successful program in the city already. And I think my time at Purdue Fort Wayne is going to really prepare me for this as well. Purdue Fort Wayne's obviously in the Horizon League sure. now. When I was there, they were in the Summit League. And, but we played the Horizon League and the MAC predominantly in the non-conference, so very familiar with the league already. Uh, but I look at a team like Oakland, and I think, why not us? That's the expectation, you know. And you know, we have very, very talented uh, high school basketball here in Indianapolis in the state. We want to build from our backyard, and then also, you know, I think that there's a lot of good transfers that have left our state that hopefully we can lure back to the state of Indiana and uh, build a special program here. Well, let's face it. Even from when you took the job at UND four years ago, how you build a program now four years later is completely different yep. in terms of what you could do. And again, kind of the ultimate example in our league last year was Green Bay. They won three games two years ago. They led the Horizon League yes, for a good did. chunk of this past year with Sonny Wicks because you can flip a roster quickly. So let's kind of talk big picture, kind of 30,000-foot view, and then we'll get into some of the specifics and some of the guys that already <laughs> we can talk about at this point they are going to join your program. But knowing you're probably going to have 13 different players than yep. you had a season ago, how do you go about constructing a roster as we're sitting here on April the 1st? Well, you know, you have to have balance because you want to bring in the healthy mix of older guys that are ready to help you win right away, but also enough young guys that when those older guys leave that your culture is established and they can keep this thing moving. You know, you want to build a program, not a team, that a program that's in a position for this team this year to have success, yes, but year by year be in position to have success. And that's what we were able to do at UND, and I thought we did a really nice job when I got that job there uh, in terms of class balance. We were after our older guys right away, and then the one-year guys, and we brought in a couple two-year guys, and a couple three-year guys, and a couple four-year guys, and that health mix is really, really important. That's what we're going to aim to do here. All right. You have some familiar names going to be joining you uh, from the south side to downtown. 
Tell us about the young men that uh, are going to be Jaguars going forward. Yeah, we're excited. We got uh, four four scholarship guys coming over from from uh, UND, and they actually signed their paperwork this afternoon. So we're excited about that. And uh, uh, we're going to start with um, our, our our scoring wings, Jarvis Walker and Paul Zalinskis. Um, Jarvis actually spent time at Purdue Fort Wayne. Correct. He's already been in the Horizon League. Came down and played for me at at UND, and man, he was awesome. He scored uh, twenty plus in ten of the last twelve games of the year. Um, finished the year averaging about thirty. 13 and a half a game, shoots 45% from three. I mean, he's a walking bucket. And I think he'll be really, really good for Jaguar fans. And then Paul Zelinskis, um, he, he he went down late in the year with a, with an injury. And, you know, he's already on the mend and will be back for, uh, back, back for you know, preseason to work out. And we're, we're confident that he'll be here for a full season. But talk about a 6'5 wing that can do it all. He can score, he can defend, he can rebound, get assists. He was arguably probably going to be the Great Lakes Valley player, uh, player of the year. In, in our league before he went down because we were number one in the league and his league numbers was like 15.6 points on 47% from three and 91% from the free throw line. Just talk about efficiency. Right. And that's the best way to describe Paul's efficiency. So I think we have two lethal scorers on the wing coming. Uh, we got a combo forward and Sean Craig, 6'7 kid that you talk about just Indiana fans like that love guys that are tough and blue collar. He's the first on the floor all the time. Like he fits my personality to a T in terms of just like grit and toughness and uh, it's infectious so you need a guy like that that's going to do all the dirty work and if you leave him open he really sticks it from three his freshman year he led the GLVC in three point percentage so really excited about him his versatility and then our, our big fellow Julian Steinfeld seven foot from Germany uh, Julian's given us really good moments at UND over the last uh, over the last few years now I think Julian's due for a breakout year here's why is because you know, first off, he was playing behind Kendrick Choa, who at Division II level is arguably the best center in the country in Division II. So Julian, uh, not, and it wasn't really his fault, probably didn't play as much as he was even capable of playing because he was sharing minutes with Kendrick. Well, also, I think at the Horizon League level, he's going to play get more guys his size and not having to size down, which I think he's going to be even better. If you look at his per rebound average, it was like top in the country in terms of rebounds per minutes played. And, you know, we played IU this year against Kahlo Ware, plays 16 minutes, has eight rebounds and two block shots. So I think coming up a level where size is going to be a premium, at a premium, and then also just getting his opportunity, I think he's going to have a breakout season. Those are the kids from a scholarship perspective that are joining you. Who else can you talk about at this point? Okay, yeah. Um, Ron Rutland uh, from Crispus Attucks High School uh, was signed for us at, at University of Indianapolis. So we want to build from our backyard. And, you know, Ron's the number eight rated player in the state. He was a junior all-star. He's a candidate for uh, Indian All-Stars this year. And you can literally not go to a high school closer than the IUPUI campus than Ron did at Crispus Attucks. <laughs> there is no doubt. There is no doubt. Just like uh, Ron Collier to UND for me, That's Crispus right. Attucks is like <laughs> right. that at IUPUI. So we're going to get him. And I'm talking Ron is going to have a great career. Ron's an excellent shooter. Great passer, high IQ. We're going to play him at the point guard. You know, he was more of a two in high school, but we're yeah. going to transition to the point. When he puts on weight and gets in that college weight room, he's going to be a problem. I really believe that. And I'm excited to have him with us um, and come over. And then we just got a commitment and a signee from Tamaris Brown, um, a 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, lefty wing that is versatile, can play the 2, 3, or 4. And he came to us from Rockhurst, the guy I coached against, 16 points, six rebounds a game, and he's just a tough, hard-nosed player that, like I said, versatility and length is really important. I'm excited to add him, too. At what point in time do you kind of want to have, again, you get 13 scholarships. At what point in time do you want to have that roster full kind of heading into the summer? You know, obviously, as a as a competitive guy and, you know, like to check boxes and move on to the next thing, you want it by the start of the summer. but. I want the right pieces and the right, right roster. So we're not going to take anybody just to take them. We're going to chip away at this thing and try to get one to two commitments a week and have the right uh, have the right team and uh, put in place and also have the program in a place to have longevity. There used to be almost kind of a stigma about guys that coached the Division II level. It was tough <laughs> to break through from D2 to D1. Josh Schertz is part of that group that has shown, hey, you can do it. But also now you see more players kind of making that jump. You're going to get players wherever you – you know, can get them, can find them, but can you almost kind of mold this first roster primarily at D2 guys and think be competitive immediately? You know, there's going to be a lot of them, yeah. uh, you know, because at that level, I know who how right. good uh, that talent is, and I think I kind of have an edge in terms of evaluating a kid from that level, and, you know, I think I know what translates, uh, but I'm a big believer that 
you take those top level D two players. Look at Jack Golke this year at Oakland, yeah. a prime example. You know, everybody knows that one. You know him as a Hillsdale Charger. Yes, I, I do. <laughs> you know, so and, and we had a guy from UND when I was there, Tate Hall, that goes up and plays for Loyola and goes to the Final Four with them. Correct. You know, so uh, I think there's a lot of parallels that can can lead to high level success. So you will see a lot of that with our program and how we build our roster. All right, hang loose for a couple minutes. We're going to take a quick time out first. This for our friends at Cat Sapper and Miller. They're a CPA and advisory firm based right here in Indianapolis. KSM believes we all have a role to play in support of communities where we work and live, and the firm is committed to playing their part. KSM is proud to support many mission-driven organizations such as Jaguar Athletics. It was dedicated to providing and enhancing life-changing opportunities for IUPUI student-athletes. Let's go Jags again. We are live at back nine, and this is part of a full afternoon for Paul. <laughs> there is a press conference at four uh, that will follow our show, and then there is a meet-and-greet so literally doors at back nine open at four o'clock. It's a beautiful day. It's not raining outside yet. And if, if it is raining, it doesn't matter. The bays are all covered and heated anyway. So come spend part of your Monday with us and meet the brand new head coach of what will be IU Indianapolis three months from now. One more segment with Paul, Director of Athletics, Luke Basso, joins us after that. And we're back in a moment as you're watching the IUPUI Coaches Show here on the ISC Sports Network. Listen up, all you golf lovers. Looking for a private course for yourself or your company? Problem solved. Indy's Eastside Hidden Gym and Pete Dye's first 18-hole design is Maple Creek Golf and Country Club. Visit maplecreekgc.com today. At Indiana University, we're undaunted by challenge. We take the lead. We don't follow the crowd. Embracing the future with boldness and bravery. Unapologetically optimistic. Equipped with the knowledge and intention to change the world. Nine campuses, one purpose. Creating tomorrow, today. Indiana University, bring on tomorrow. Going the extra mile happens every day here at Perf Jones. College is one of the biggest milestones you will undergo in your lifetime. It's the excitement, I think, of knowing what you're producing is going to be on someone's wall with their diplomas. It's pride, it's loyalty, it's passion. I get goosebumps just thinking about it. At Indiana Members Credit Union, we're invested in more than just your finances. We're invested in your future, the future of your family, the well-being of the community you live in, and in those who dream big. Until those dreams become a reality, any bank can give you a loan or open an account. At IMCU, we care about more than just dollars and cents. We care about doing things that make sense. And investing in you makes good sense to us. This is the place that's skill-built. Here, highly skilled physicians never rest in their pursuit to heal, to comfort, to cure. With these hands, you'll receive nationally recognized heart care and Indiana's most leading-edge cancer care. With these hearts, with these guts, with these brains, you'll find the highest level of care in the state. This is the hope that's skill-built, and it's around every corner of Indiana University Health. We are back and live at Back 9 downtown Indianapolis. Again, this is the IUPUI Coaches Show with you here at 4 on the ISG Sports Network. Press conference with Paul at 4 o'clock, then the official meet and greet to say hello to the new head coach of the IUPUI Jaguars and Paul Casaro. Runs from 4.30 until 6. Doors open at Back 9 at 4. This portion of the program brought to us by Taylor's Bakery. Jaguar fans, thanks to our great sponsor, Taylor's Bakery. They support Jaguars athletics. Taylor's Bakery is Indy's oldest full-line bakery. It's been around since 1913. They try to bake happiness into every bite. They're a six-time WeddingWire.com award winner, crowned Best Bakery in Indy in 2024 by Nextdoor. Two great locations in the Broad Ripple area, 62nd and Allisonville Road, and in Fishers, 8395 
East 116th Street, Taylor's Bakery, Taylor made for you since 1913. We can't show them on camera because we have to like completely redo our setup, but you have a large <laughs> chunk of family here to watch you today. Tell us about them. Oh, yeah, I do. Very blessed. Uh, my wife, uh, Brooke, is back there with our 10-week-old son, Greg. He's all dolled up in this press conference attire. And uh, my mom and dad, uh, Greg and Susie Cassaro, very happy to have them here. Uh, can't get more support than my family gives me. I'm very lucky, and we'll have more showing up here throughout the day. By the way, the combination Easter and press conference bow tie for your 10-week-old, spot on. Yeah, you know, I told, told job well done on that. Brooke did a great job in terms of being thrifty because you know I, I I'm 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 cheap, and I, I saw the bill, and she was like, "Hey, it's going to serve its purpose back to back days, so we're good." If if she's happy with it, then believe me, it served its purpose. <laughs> I have known you since you were literally a sophomore in high school. And again, you were known as a, as a football player in high school and, frankly, a football player in your first collegiate stop at, at Youngstown State. Yep. I know I've asked you a variation of this question over the years before. Why basketball over football from a coaching perspective? Well, when I, I had opportunities for both out of high school. And honestly, I was probably a better basketball player or pr should have played a different position in football in college. My mom's probably laughing back there because I was more like Tim Tebow. I couldn't really throw, but I wanted to play quarterback. And it came from a football high school, so I kind of felt pressure to go play, you know, college football. Uh, but went to Youngstown, and, and honestly, it was a good experience for me. But ultimately, from a stylistic standpoint of football, and then you know, being a little homesick, and then also missing basketball, um, just wasn't the right fit. And left after a year, and come back to UND to play both. And um, I, I had a great experience at UND in both, uh, but. I had a really tight relationship with Stan Gerrard, and um, that's ultimately what led me to coach. Is my 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 head coach? Um, he and I became very close, and then he offered me the opportunity to join his staff, and I just enjoyed it so much. So I owe all of this to him. How do you see that football background? kind of reflected into you as, as a basketball coach. <laughs> what are some things you might do differently than, say, other basketball guys? Oh, well, you would think we probably need a, a helmet and shoulder pads and some of our rebounding drills and our loose ball drills. So that probably starts there. And then, you know, we really don't call fouls in practice very much. So we got to finish <laughs> through contact. And, you know, I, I'm big on, on, on toughness and, you know, um, doing things, you know, from a physicality standpoint. And our guys will learn real quick, too, the way we lift. We're going to lift four days a week, yeah. especially in the off season, And we're going to be bigger, stronger, tougher, more physical than everyone we play. Trust me, as someone that, that got to see your teams not on a regular basis, but a semi-regular basis at UND, that's what jumped off the page at me, is that you had some dudes. You, you could tell the weight room is where your team spent a lot of time, yes. and I expect that translates to the Division One level, correct? Absolutely. And, I, and I'll be honest with you, they, they put in the work. You know, we when I got there, we were a young team, and uh, we that first year, we we weren't physically ready. And, and from that point forward, I remember we, we got beat on the O boards really badly in one of my uh, games my first year. And I walked in the locker room and said, hey, if we're going to do anything, we're going to live in the weight room. And that's not happening anymore. And I think uh, physicality in the weight room it helps with a couple of things. Obviously, on the rebounding battle, um, it helps finishing through contact, but it also helps in the turnover battle, forcing turnovers on other teams and then protecting the ball, too. And I'm a big believer in ball control, even in basketball, a big football term, is huge part of success. And turnovers and rebounding is a big part of that. You you got to have kind of a first-time experience on Saturday night. You and I are getting to hang out at the uh, IHSAA <laughs> Basketball State Finals, and you're wearing that script Jaguar polo at, at a state finals event. What was that experience like for you? That was cool. I got a lot of texts, and people were telling me I look good in my new shade of red. So uh, maybe it fits me a little bit better, that shade. But uh, We're you know, not judging or comparing here. It looks yeah, great so, in both, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, it was great. You know, just um, it, it's just awesome. You know, people want – IU Indianapolis to be good in basketball and to have success and to feel that love and support and the excitement behind, you know, a new direction, you know, it's humbling and, and, and I'm really honored. All right. Now the next kind of public event you get to go to is something coaches at all levels go to. It's about to be final four time for you. Yep. You're going to be joining thousands of Purdue fans that are making their way out <laughs> to the Valley of the Sun. What are those days like for you in terms of staff building, recruiting, swapping stories, trying to get games scheduled, et cetera? What are those next few days like for you? A little bit of everything. You know, I have a, a few events I have to be at and a few just kind of uh, private meetings here or there. It's going to be a quick trip. Uh, Luke and I are actually going together. We're going to uh, get out there Friday morning and fly back Sunday morning. So it's a quick 48 hours, and I'll be busy the whole time. But, yeah, you know, you'll, you'll ask about, you know, players that might be available with you know, fellow colleagues, uh, do have a few meet, a few meetings on staffing that uh, can't talk about that 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 in depth, but you know that that will be a part of it. And always trying to get games. Our schedule's not done yet, and but we are working on that. All right. So finally, before we let you go, again, you've got other responsibilities coming up here in about ten minutes or so. I've asked <laughs> you what the last seven days have been like. 
You just kind of spelled out what the next seven days are going to be like. What do the next couple, three months look like as you are rallying support for the team, as you're filling a roster, as you're filling a coaching staff and yep. filling a schedule? <laughs> what, what are some of the things that, that you're like, okay, these are the boxes I've got to check over these next few weeks? Well, I think those are the main things. It's going to be it's, – it's, it's roster, it's staff, it's schedule. But then there's a lot of other things, too, that, you know, we, we got to start, you know, getting in contact with the alumni, you know, and, and, and getting them back involved. And, you know, then, you know, getting to know your student athletes from a personal level because it's all about relationships. College athletics is so much about relationships with your current staff, your current roster, getting to know those student athletes. But also, you know, you need support and you want people to be excited, but you can't just ex- expect those people just to show up to games. So – I'm going to do a lot with community outreach, getting out there and, and letting people know that we want their involvement and want them around our program. And then just getting with our administration and understanding what they need from me, um, you know, in terms of as we wrap up this school year and going into the next school year. I'm going to give you two websites for more information. One, get your tickets now, iupuijags.com slash tickets, as simple as that. But secondly, you want to donate to men's basketball? <laughs> Here's the way you do that, iupuijags.com slash give now, J-A-F. That stands for the Jaguars Athletics Fund. That go that covers 16 different sports, over 250 different student athletes. But obviously, you can specify as to which sport that goes to. You want to donate to men's basketball? It's a great way to do it. IUPUIJags.com slash give now slash J A F. My friend, I'm so happy for you. Thank you. Looking forward to getting to work with you on a much more regular basis. Absolutely. Go Jags. Again, that's the head coach of the IUPUI Jaguars and Paul Casaro. Luke Basso, director of athletics, will wrap up the show with us next as you're watching live from Back Nine Golf Entertainment in downtown Indianapolis, the IUPUI Coaches Show here on the ISC Sports Network. Listen up, all you golf lovers. Looking for a private course for yourself or your company? Problem solved. Indy's Eastside Hidden Gym and Pete Dye's first 18-hole design is Maple Creek Golf and Country Club. Visit maplecreekgc.com today. At Indiana University, we're undaunted by challenge. We take the lead. We don't follow the crowd. Embracing the future with boldness and bravery. Unapologetically optimistic. Equipped with the knowledge and intention to change the world. Nine campuses, one purpose. Creating tomorrow, today. Indiana University, bring on tomorrow. Going the extra mile happens every day here at Perf Jones. College is one of the biggest milestones you will undergo in your lifetime. It's the excitement, I think, of knowing what you're producing is going to be on someone's wall with their diploma. It's pride, it's loyalty, it's passion. I get goosebumps just thinking about it. At Indiana Members Credit Union, we're invested in more than just your finances. We're invested in your future, the future of your family, the well-being of the community you live in, and in those who dream big. Until those dreams become a reality, any bank can give you a loan or open an account. At IMCU, we care about more than just dollars and cents. We care about doing things that make sense. And investing in you makes good sense to us. This is the place that's skill-built. Here, highly skilled physicians never rest in their pursuit to heal, to comfort, to cure. With these hands, you'll receive nationally recognized heart care and Indiana's most leading-edge cancer care. With these hearts, with these guts, with these brains, you'll find the highest level of care in the state. This is the hope that's skill-built, and it's around every corner of Indiana University Health. Welcome back for a final time on what will be, we think, is our final edition of the IUPUI Coaches Show for the year because we thought the one was four weeks ago. You hire a new coach. We are happy to have another edition. Luke Basso, Director of Athletics, joins us now. First, this for our friends at 92C Partners, proud to support Jaguar Athletics. 92C Partners is a woman-owned, full-service commercial real estate firm serving clients throughout Indiana and beyond. 
In addition to brokerage services, 92C provides strategic planning, space design, construction management, and project management. If you have any real estate needs, please visit 92partners.com. Luke Basso joins us now. You've been a very busy guy <laughs> for the last, ever since you set foot on campus, frankly, but especially the last four weeks, you were still very gracious and usually taking my phone call, knowing that dozens of candidates literally were calling you on a daily basis. What was the month of March like for you? Uh, it was insane, Greg. I mean, honestly, I, I spent the better part of my adult life uh, people not having my cell phone. Uh, so <laughs> now everybody does. <laughs> yeah, everybody does now. Uh, I felt terrible for my wife uh, because, as, as I've told people, uh, people giving references or basketball coaches don't care what time it is. They'll text you at 9.45, yeah, absolutely, yeah. 10 p.m., say, hey, do you have 15 minutes? Um, and I was constantly looking at the phone and, and, and talking to people. But, you know, we, we talked to a lot of people, and it kept circling back to where Paul was at the top of the list. So, so, so excited for him to, to be with us now. It was a thorough, it was an extensive process. I don't expect you to kind of give away trade secrets here. But, but, if, but if you don't mind, give people kind of the 30,000-foot view as to – who all was involved and in, 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 in what you asked in terms of interviews on campus, et cetera? Yeah, so, um, you know, we had a, had a great list of people involved. Obviously, John LaCrone and, and his search firm helped us lead it. Uh, a lot of people internally. But we, I have a philosophy. Uh, we only did 30-minute interviews at a time. And I, and I would tell every coaching candidate, if you couldn't impress me in 30 minutes or I couldn't remember you in 30 minutes, you're not going to be able to recruit. Uh, so uh, we made sure and kept that uh, really short in that process. I mean, we did over 35 Zoom interviews, uh, then did a second round of – of, of 10 or 12 candidates. Then we brought people on campus. But, you know, our new chancellor, uh, T Chancellor Ramchand was involved. President Whitman was involved. Um, senior staff at, at uh, IU Indianapolis and, and the IU, IU Network were involved. And, you know, a lot of it was feel, right? Uh, everybody's great during an interview. Uh, and, and you got to make sure that when you're talking to them. But, you know, the thing that we were really impressed with in, in all of our candidates at the end, they had an edge. And I wanted somebody who is going to take this job and run with it. And every, every wall that says you can't win here, run through it. And we know from a history that we can do it. And, you know, every time with, with Paul, obviously somebody told me a long way, you're not going to get a division one basketball job interview if you can't coach. Right? right. So we did spend some time at X's and O's and having those conversations. But when it came down to it, are you going to be able to recruit? Are you going to put this chip on your shoulder and run through these walls? And, uh, you know, at, at the end of it, you know, that, that I think it describes Paul in a lot of ways. Paul checked every box. Yes. I, I guess uh, I'm not trying to have you repeat yourself here, but, <laughs> but what was it that kind of set him apart from the competition. Well, I mean, he's the Southside version of me, right? He knows uh, knows everybody. You know, every day we find out uh, uh, different people that are re related to him. His success down at UND, I mean, to take that program where it was, obviously number one seed this year, um, you know, those those things. And, and for, we've talked about this, if you recruit Indiana, you're going to win at this job. And you look at the success he's had over the last uh, four years at UND, I mean, 40 uh, I think it's 40 some players from Indiana, 27 from from Central Indiana. Right. Um, you know, those type of things are really, really attractive to me uh, because you know, with the history of this state and the talent we have here, there's no reason why we shouldn't win. And if we keep these kids home, I mean, there was a, uh, I saw a stat online. Indiana had the second most players in the NCAA tournament. Uh, it, it, and there was one team from Indiana in the tournament, right? So, you know, 12 guys from Purdue, and then you have 20-plus other guys who are from Indiana playing in the tournament. If we keep 10 of those guys home, we're going to be really successful. All right, so this clearly has been your primary focus <laughs> for the last month and, and frankly, uh, kind of longer before that during the course of the season. Now what? Now, now that you and, and Paul are, are kind of in, in lockstep, now what does the next month look for like look like for you as the director of athletics at IUPUI? Yeah, I was telling somebody today. You know, when when I used to do these big economic development projects for the city and state, you get to the point where you sign it, and there's like a relief, and then you got to build it, right? Right. Uh, so you know, there was a there was a couple hours of relief uh, uh, and excitement of that, and and now we're going to build it, right? So uh, you know, Paul's been working really hard in the recruiting trail and the phone trail, and we're trying to give him everything from an athletic department that he needs to make this a seamless transition. Um, you know, obviously recruiting in the summer, letting people know, you know, he's now at IU Indianapolis. And, and then we get to the season, right? I don't, I don't mean to skip so far ahead, but I'm excited right. to get to basketball season. Now it's doing those things we have to do to be successful. Now it's things like marketing. Now it's things like collectives. Yes. Now it's things like season <laughs> tickets that will keep you busy going yeah. forward. Uh, and, you know, you've, you've hit it today, IUPUI.com slash tickets. You know, come out and support uh, Paul and the team in the jungle. Really excited to go back to the jungle for the majority of our games this year. 
year, as you know better than anybody. Uh, it's gonna you can create a really great atmosphere in there, a home court advantage, and we're gonna give people a lot of things to cheer about this year. In other words, you got to be one of the first 1,200 because once we get past <laughs> 1,200, the fire marshal has to get involved once we get to that point. So iupuijags.com slash tickets is where you can get yours today. My friend, congratulations. I think you made the right hire. Me too. And, uh, let's, let's do some winning, shall we? Yes, sir. We All will. Right. For Paul Cassaro, as well, the director of athletics and Luke Basso, my name is Greg Rakestraw. Thanks to the good folks at Back 9. Thanks to the ISC Sports Network guys behind the scenes in terms of Vince Morales and J.D. Arland. Again, the meet and greet starts well about now. So get here and join us. Doors are open at back nine at 4 o'clock. Thanks for being with us on ISC.